Hello everyone, welcome again to video tutorials of LIS 2360 Web App Development with me, Muhammad Prabhu Bowo. So we are already in the lesson 8 This is the last lesson So keep carry on In this lesson 8, we will learn about jQuery Zybook has 8 parts explaining about jQuery and it consists of participation activities and the challenge activities where we will learn about what is jQuery and the selectors of jQuery events, styles and animation, DOM manipulation, AJAX, plugins and weather comparison with jQuery. jQuery is a JavaScript library and it focuses on a broad range of tasks. So as a library, library is a collection of functions. So it's, as you can see, jQuery is a subset of JavaScript because it contains of functions of JavaScript. So the objective of jQuery is to make everything much simpler and shorter and much more efficient. And library is different from framework. Framework is a set of libraries, so it's a collection of libraries. It is much more comprehensive, such as AngularJS, Ember, and Backbone.js and the function is actually similar the common task performed by jQuery is DOM manipulation user interaction animation widgets Ajax so all these tasks we already learned in JavaScript but when we are using jQuery it's much simpler so I will show you so in the previous lesson we learned get element by ID get elements by class name is it is to select the class to select the tag to select the ID and then we can modify the DOM or modify the content of it when we are using jQuery because jQuery already contain a lot of functions including get element by ID so we just need to use dollar sign so for example when we are using uh, JavaScript when we want to select the tag we can use get elements by tag name. So it's a the code is very long because we have to select get elements by tag name and then we change it in a HTML. But when we are using jQuery, we just use dollar sign followed by the tag that we want to select. And we can also select ID. We can use dollar sign and then hashtag task. It is to select ID and for select a class we can use dollar sign and then dot test so it's the function is pretty similar with JavaScript that we learned previously to select the class previously in JavaScript we use get elements by class name and to select a tag we can use get elements by tag name but when we are using jQuery it's much simpler so we just need to use dollar sign for this tutorial we'll be using w3schools.com so how to add jQuery in your web app or web page? So there are two ways. First, you can use local jQuery where you download the file into your server or to your local machine. And then you link the jQuery using script tag. You can, or you can use the external source for jQuery. So you can use, for example, a CDN, a content delivery network. So there are benefits using either one of them. If you are using offline jQuery or a jQuery that you downloaded, it has, it may faster in terms of downloads. So your web app doesn't depend on external sources, but in the other hand but you have to update it manually and you, for the external ones it will get updated regularly but once it is offline then it will affect your web app so jquery syntax so mostly jquery using dollar sign a dollar sign is used to define or access jquery and followed by selector to query or find HTML elements and followed by a jQuery action 
of or task that needs to be performed on the elements for example dollar sign p and then followed by height so it will hide all of the p elements and if you aware that mostly in jquery there will be document ready function so why we need document ready so in all jquery methods there will be document ready so document ready is about is when the page is loaded or as soon as the page being loaded in the browser and jquery method will be applied this is to prevent any jquery code from running before the document is finished loading so it will not run before the document is ready So jQuery selector, this is the example, dollar sign P, so it selects all the paragraph elements, dollar sign button, so for example, I have button, and here, when I click the button, it will hide all of the paragraph. So when I click this, it will hide all of the paragraphs. And jQuery events. So events is like a response to user's action. So for example, you are moving a mouse or selecting a button or clicking on the mouse. So we can load jquery based on the events so for example i'm selecting all the paragraph and then clicked and for example i have what kind of actions when i click the paragraph so for example i would like to hide the paragraph when i click the paragraph so when we apply it so when i click it will make the paragraph disappear so it is based on the event and jquery has a lot of effects for example height show fade slides animate stop so let's practice it so for example I have two buttons with me button ID height and button ID show so when I click height so this is to select the ID height without jQuery we have to define like we have to use get element by ID but in jQuery it's much simpler we just need to write dollar sign and then and then hashtag height so when we click all the paragraph will be hidden and the id show or the button for show when we click it it will show all the paragraphs so when we click hide it will hide the paragraphs when we click show it will make appearing again we also we can also use fade fade in it slowly appear fade out is slowly disappear so when we we can we can try so here i have with diff i'm use with this diff i'm creating a box there are three box diff one diff two diff three so the box has width and height of atp 80 pixel so the box has width and height of 80 pixels the first one is red green the second one is green the third one is blue so when I click the button so this button when I selecting the button when I click it 
it will fade in the first box and followed by the second one and the third one so when I click it so as you can see red green blue will appear slowly and we can also define the duration we can use like slow fast or we can also define the the number it is in millisecond we can also use jQuery for slides for slides animation we can use slides up slides down so let's try it I have a div that can be clicked and then I have div content contain hello world and when so here I'm selecting a flip when it is clicked when the div that has an idea of flip it is clicked it will slide down the panel that contains hello world so when we test it so it slide down We can also use for animation. So let's try it. So here I have a button, start animation. And I have a paragraph by default. All HTML elements. And then I have div to show box so here in this in the script I'm selecting the button when the button is click it will select the div animate it will move from left to right for 250 pixels so when we click it So it will move the box so to use jQuery you can use you can go to the website jQuery.com and click on the API documentation it contains a lot of it contains all the things you need to use jQuery in your web app so it's very comprehensive list of functions you can use the documentation to read all of the functions and all of the attributes in jQuery so in the last part of lesson 8 jQuery in Zybooks there is a there's a small apps that compare whether it uses jQuery so it use jQuery, it use Ajax. So you can copy all of the codes. There are three files. The first one is weather.html. So I can copy. You can create new file in Cloud9. For example, I have weather.html and then I have weather.js and I have styles.css. You need to link all the CSS and JavaScript, the weather JavaScript in the in the, in the HTML file. So here I'm linking style sheet, styles.css, and then I link the jQuery through Google CDN and I link the weather.js. And when we refresh it, when we preview it, so let's save it and then preview the weather. So you can copy the codes into three different files. So the first one is weather.html. So you can copy from Zybooks, weather.html, copy, select all, and then 
right click copy you can create a new file in in cloud9 and then name it weather.html and then go and then paste it to the to the weather html and then do the same thing with your styles.css and weather.js so we are using so when you finish you can save and then preview it so there are two cities that you can compare and it uses the API key from Zybooks you can replace it with your API Tallahassee and then this is Orlando So we see that there are day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5. We have a name, we have high, we have low, and the image. Stars.css contains the presentation of the CSS file. So it has how to present the results. Hope to present the tables, error message which is red, and weather input, and in weather.js, so it has several functions. So the first one is function. So the first one is selecting an ID, compare button. So here we if we go back to the HTML, it has a button that has an ID compare button. And it selects city one ID. So here city one. And then this is the second one, city two ID. Which is selecting, which is selected as an input, and in here in function city input, it is called when city input values change, so it extract the text from city input that triggered the callback, and then it shows. Error message is there is no city, so if we put space, so it will show enter a city error. It is in red as explained in the CSS. The error message shows in red. When we click something that the database cannot pull the data it will show enable to load city so here it is using api from open weather map so as you can see when it is use dollar sign it using the query so when we type something Tallahassee and Orlando when we compare it will show five days or four days that compare between Tallahassee and Orlando. So that's all for this video tutorial about jQuery. I hope it helps you to understand basics and how to use jQuery in the web app. Thank you very much for watching and see you again in the next video tutorial.